network theory is the surprisingly interesting mathematics of connecting dots with lines. Let's draw you as a dot. Okay, now let's draw everyone else in your town as a dot. Then let's draw a line between people in your town who are friends. Well, now we have a network. Next, let's consider how ideas might travel through a network like this. Like, for example, a new word like yeet. If you lived in a small Icelandic village 300 years ago, then chances are you knew everyone in your town and they all knew each other and not many of you knew anyone else. So if you use the expression, the raisin at the end of the sausage, to describe something surprising and delightful, then the chances are that everyone else in your village did too. This is called a close ties network. But now, let's think about a network like Calgary, where we don't all know each other, but we have Mayor Nenshi, and he's shaking hands with pretty much everyone. If you wanted to get a word to spread around the city, his Twitter feed might be a good bet. He's what network theorists call a hub. In 1998, two mathematicians were curious about what complex real-world networks look like. More like Icelandic villages, or more hub and spoky. They made graphs of three datasets. The neuron connections in the brain of a worm, a map of all the power lines in the western United States, and a list of all the actors who were in movies together. Six degrees of Kevin Bacon. It turns out all these networks had identical features. Clusters of small, close-knit villages connected to each other by mere nenshi like hubs. They called them small world networks, and they're everywhere. Your brain is one, the internet is one, and so that's why we know yeet. Thank you, internet. <laughs>